Greetings, friends from around the world. You're listening to the Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sasevelich. Welcome. Well, what about anti-Semitism? Because it seems to be on rise. Well, indeed, in Israel, 365 news uh, on this in this month, January the 13th, we have read that Nathan Sharansky issues warning that anti-Semitism has become mainstream. Speaking at the annual Combat Anti-Semitism Movement, CAM, advisory board meeting uh, on, that will be January 12th, Chairman Nathan Sharansky said for the last 20 years we could see, we could say anti-Semitism is on, on the rise, so what makes this year different? In the past, we have talked about anti-Semitism on the left and anti-Semitism on the right. This year it became mainstream. Sharansky was joined by fellow CAM advisory board members such as former Senator Joel Lieberman, former Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada Irwin Kotler, former United Nations Special Reporter on Freedom of Religion and Belief Ahmed Shahid, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Guatemala Mario Adolfo Bucaro Flores. Sharansky also emphasized that the United Nations has attempted to delegitimize Israel and holds double standards toward Israel. Board members joined from all over the world, including North America, Europe, and the Middle East. All of this, friends, is happening within a context of extreme polarization everywhere, Sharansky added, making it difficult to have one weapon with which to help suppress anti-Semitism. We need to unite people on the left and the right, Sharansky said to the board, against the new forms of anti-Semitism and look for new allies. Against a huge rise of anti in anti-Semitism today, we need a very broad front. front. Now, many broad board members also agreed on the need to deal with the more subtle forms of anti-Semitism, not just the obvious elements such as swastika graffiti. Now, as far as anti-Semitism goes, going mainstream, please consider the latest bulletin that the Temple Institute uh, sent as a let newsletter to its readers, and it was sent on January 13th as well, 2023. It says the time is ripe to take back the Temple Mount. Ever since Israel's new Minister of Internal Security, Itamar ben Gvir made an early morning ascent to the Temple Mount last week, the Temple Mount has been headla headlining in the international news. While the response of the Western Democrats to ben Gvir's walk on the Mount was both pathetic and despicable. The hypocritical uproar has prompted many writers and activists and public figures to publish articles not only defending Ben Gvir's act, but call for the elimination of the so-called status quo, which is nothing more than a racist which denies Jews their inalienable right to ascend and pray on the Temple Mount, but also allows Muslims unfettered freedom to destroy ancient temple artifacts while repurposing buildings on the mount to be used as a mo as mosque and while using the temple mount to incite hatred and violence to Jews, which has already cost many lives. Friends, truly, it was not wrong for a Jewish political leader to walk on the area in Israel called the temple mount, but yes... He was condemned for it, indeed, and anti-Semitism was the official position of the pagan sun god worshipping Roman Emperor Constantine in the 4th century, and sadly many people have missed how anti-Semitic this man was and has and had been in his during his rule. He is considered in the Eastern Orthodox Church to be a saint. In the Western Catholic Church, his mother is considered to be a saint, but not him because of his not very exemplary life. But notice, notice what Constantine stated. Constantine, this is quote from his uh, biographer's Life of Constantine, book 3, chapter 18. Let us then have nothing in common with the detestable Jewish crowd, for we have received from our Savior a different way. Jewish detestable crowd. Now you tell me if this is not anti-Semitic. Yes, it is. And this person, for whatever reason, has never been called out for anti-Semitism and the Jewish communities around the world, for some reason, have missed this historical figure, very prominent figure, and his terrible anti-Semitism, which he expressed in written form after the famous Council of Nicaea 325. 
the way that Jesus, who was Jewish, taught differently was love, dear friends. Jesus never taught to have nothing in common with the detestable Jewish crowd. Roman Catholics referred to Constantine as Constantine the Great, but he obviously held anti-Semitic views. He was a rabid anti-Semite. Scholars, including the late French Cardinal Jean Yunol Marie Danielu, Dr. Danielu thought that the church history has generally been mistaught and that the original Christian church was quite Jewish, under quotation mark, and he specifically wrote that the misteaching of the Jewishness of the faith has led to a false picture of Christian history. I'm quoting from Danilo Cardinal Danilo, The Theology of Jewish Christianity, translated by John A. Baker, and it was published in 1964 by the Westminster Press in Philadelphia, and this quote is from page 2, and this is so important, so please let me quote it again. So, misteaching of the Jewishness of the faith has led to a false picture of Christian history. Anyway, it is well known by scholars that the first 15 bishops of overseers of Jerusalem were circumcised Jews. Anyway, that 